exactly predict what someone weighs by their height. But it is the case that if someone is taller, I would tend to think that they're going to be weighing more than if they're shorter. So, but that's not always the case, right? We could have somebody that's like, if this is measured in uh, inches, so 63 inches, 63 divided by 12 would be uh, 5.25 feet. And, and they could be like 200 pounds or 180 pounds, right? That, that could happen because you could have a very heavy, shorter individual. They would be kind of an outlier uh, on the trend line, right? But the general, the general line is going to go like this. So it's not going to give us a perfect, it's the height of someone's not going to give us a perfect estimate of the weight, but we can give a linear approximation of what that would be. That's typically what we're trying to do here. So ice cream sales and temperature would be another example where you would think that as the temperatures go up, you would plot how many, how much ice cream you're going to have. So now temperature is going up and you plot ice cream sales. You would think that as the temperature goes up, that you would have more uh, ice cream sales. That might not always be the case because you might have had a cold rainy day that had like a festival next to your ice cream shop or something and you sold a lot of ice cream even though it was cold. Uh, but in general, you would generally think that would be the case, right? Purpose of scatter plots. So show the relationship between two variables. So we're back to our hens and our eggs. If we plot these two things together, we can show the relationship. Now, obviously, intuitively, if I was a farmer, I would have a pretty decent sense that hens are causing the eggs, right? That more hens means hey, there's a relationship between the two. But uh, each point represents a pair of data. But uh, if I plot them, then I get a better sense of exactly what that that relationship is. And, and then I can start to make decisions like how many hens would I need if I want so many eggs by giving myself a linear kind of equation that I can and I can put calculations in. So in uh, identifying patterns. So linear patterns indicate potential correlation. So uh, this one's the height and weight again. Now with height and weight, you would think be pretty confident that you make a hypothesis that there is going to be a cause and effect relationship. If someone is taller, they're gonna have more mass. They're gonna weigh more typically everything else equal. So, so if there's, if I plot that, you could see that pattern. Now, again, there could be things where you're just combing through data and you see a pattern that's positively correlated like this, and there is absolutely no rational reason as to why it would be. It just happens randomly that happened to be correlated. And so that's what we have to be careful with the correlation equaling causation. But 